Hi, I'm Justin Fratarelli, and you're watching Tennis Ninja TV. Aloha guys, Shane Cash from the Tennis Ninja here. Welcome back to Tennis Ninja TV. I know it's been forever since I've probably seen you guys, but the Tennis Ninja has been really busy the last several months. To begin with, I got married <laughs> back in January this year, and I moved out of my parents' place for the first time ever in my life. It was a milestone in my life looking back, and I'm very uh, excited for the new chapter ahead of me. You can look behind me here. I'm also now the director of tennis here at Wildlife Eki 5. This is my office I'm actually filming from. So today I'm going to be bringing to you 10 etiquette mistakes tennis players and non-tennis players alike make on the court and how to fix them. Tennis etiquette mistake number one, guys, is walking behind players while they're playing tennis. There's always gates nearby where you play and people will walk onto the court in order to let's say get to another tennis court nearby that they want to play on or they're just coming on maybe take a shortcut walking through the park and tennis players when they're playing tennis and they see people behind them or they can just sense them walking behind them uh, there's always that chance if a player moves they line up a ball and when they take their racket back they hit somebody they step into somebody or they just get distracted from hitting the ball and actually becomes a dangerous situation if players are playing matches and people walk behind them on the tennis court during that situation imagine if someone on the other side is hitting a serve and they hit a hundred mile an hour ball the person returning the serve misses and the person behind walking gets nailed um, and maybe they just don't know the etiquette and they look at you all funny kind when actually you have the right of way if you're the tennis player. Please walk behind tennis players while they're not playing tennis. That's actually the time you can walk on the court to get to another tennis court, is wait for tennis players who are playing to stop what they're doing, and some of them are nice enough, they'll just, they'll kind of wait, and that's your cue to walk across. So guys, please be very respectful of players who are already playing tennis on the tennis court. If you're trying to make your way there, you can also walk behind the fence that the tennis court maybe has in order to get to the other gate to enter the tennis courts. Tennis etiquette mistake number two is not closing the gates when you enter or exit a tennis court. Guys, it's a pet peeve of mine mostly, but when a gate is open, that's a chance for tennis balls to roll out of the tennis court. And when people are playing tennis, or especially if they're like doing lessons, the balls actually can roll outside the gate, which means more mess created outside that either coaches, players, parents, whoever, has to go outside and bring the balls in. And the other thing too, guys, is when the gate is open, it allows other people to think, oh, like if you're a non-tennis player, people think, oh, I can just walk right in. When in this case, that's not the case. So it's like having your door open at the house, right? You don't just leave your door open all day long. But for the most part, you want to keep that gate closed just so then tennis balls stay inside and random people don't just go walking onto the tennis courts. I've had multiple instances where I'm playing tennis at, you know, a public park, for example, and there's a court with a gate open nearby and random kids, you know, maybe if their parents are playing uh, basketball nearby or something, they see an open gate, they're going to walk in and sometimes they even walk onto the tennis court while we're playing. We'll also want to walk in and take a ball, which it happens sometimes when there's lessons or practices going on. If you see a gate open on a tennis court and you're playing, whether you're playing or not, it's good etiquette to close that gate and make sure that the tennis court is secure so the ball stays inside and people know not to walk inside while people are playing tennis. Tennis etiquette mistake number three, not calling let when a ball from another court rolls onto your tennis court. There's a bunch of things that can happen with this and this mostly happens in recreational play. When the ball rolls from another court to your court, you need to stop the point out of etiquette for your opponent mostly. I know you really want to win the point. You may have a short ball and a winner lined up and a ball rolls onto your court and you just keep playing the point. Now, if it's not really gonna affect you that much or your opponent, you can go ahead and just play the point, finish the shot, last shot on. But for the most part, the rally's going on back and forth, guys. You wanna make sure that you stop that point and make it a fair environment for everybody else in terms of uh, playing matches. So guys, if a ball rolls onto your court, if you're able to call it, please stop the point. I know you really wanna win the point, but just make sure, guys, that it's a safe environment first. In the upper levels, I know balls roll onto your court, especially if you're like a set of three courts and you're in the middle court, which means the balls will cross over, over and over again. 
and you might have to stop the match. If it really does bug you and your opponent's fine with it, just keep playing the point. But for the most part, just expect some stoppages and be able to pick the balls up and just keep the balls on each other's courts and everybody will be hunky-dory and playing. Tennis etiquette mistake number four, guys, is not calling the score out loud or switching scorecards when you're at a club court. Guys, this is a pet peeve of recreational players mostly. It's not really so much a universal thing. Maybe it could be, but there's a reason why the stereotype guys, what's the score kind of guy in tennis? I'm one of those people. I do ask that question all the time. It just helps me kind of figure out what to do before the point even starts. Because if it's like flip 40, and maybe I just lost track of the score because my mind's somewhere else, um, then I need to know to get back in the zone in terms of what to do in the point. For most players though, they just forget the score and it, it leads to score discrepancies at all levels. Especially I've seen it common in kids in junior tennis when tennis players are either starting playing early and they haven't quite learned scoring yet or experienced players that actually don't really say the score because they're focused you know, on trying to win the point. However, out of etiquette, it's good to say the score so your opponent knows what it is and people who are watching like umpires or parents, they know what the score is as well. At the higher levels guys, in tournaments and college tennis, sometimes you have umpires and chairs sitting next to you and the professionals, they call the score for you. So like you don't have to bother with any of that stuff. But unless we're at that level, we should out of good etiquette and sportsmanship call the score. The other thing guys is that clubs, is just again, my personal pet peeve. When I have scorecards, I like using the scorecards. Maybe you don't, I don't know, but if there's scorecards there, it's usually good to just update the set score anyway, because again, you know, it's like not saying the score at all. If you're like, what the heck is this score? It's good to just make sure the cards are always up to date, so if there's anybody watching from far away, you may not even know it, they can see the score and they know what's going on, or if it's almost their time to walk onto the court. If you don't want to be one of those people calling the score, I totally get it. If you're playing doubles, Maybe have your partner call the score. In singles, have one person at least always remember the score. But guys, it is a pet peeve of myself and other tennis players who are not aware of this. Please call the scores out loud if you can and update those scorecards if you're just one of those people that need to know what the stat score is. Etiquette mistake number five, hogging the tennis court when someone nearby is waiting for your court. Now, this can be very subjective because guys, if you're at a public facility or even at a club, if someone is patiently waiting for your tennis court and all the other courts around you are taken, people are playing, if you've been there for like two hours or so and you know people are constantly waiting for your court, it's good etiquette to just jump off the court for a little while and let these people play. Because you don't know their story whether they're gonna only play for like 10, 15 minutes or maybe an hour or two like you. We don't know that. Public court rule and most clubs, they say you're limited to about 45 minutes to an hour on one tennis court. It's good, because then it keeps rotation of players going and everybody's able to jump on and play. Now, subjective part. If you're at a court, especially a public park, and you have regular players, like myself, you know, we have our favorite tennis courts we like to play at every weekend. We like to stay on those courts for two, three hours. If there's nobody waiting for your tennis court, yeah, you can stay there as long as you want. You can play the whole afternoon to your heart's content. If you're a person waiting for the court, stay on that court, guys, until you get that chance. If you do see another tennis court nearby you, open up though. Don't continue to wait for that court. Go to that open one that just opened and grab it while you got the chance. Someone else does. Tennis etiquette mistake number six is waiting on the wrong spot of the park or club for a tennis court. For example, guys, when you are at a tennis court and there's courts one, two, three, and four, if you're waiting for court four, and that's all the way on this side of the park, but you're waiting by court one, which is on this side of the park, if that one opens, you know, how's the player over there supposed to even know if you want that court or not? We don't know. So really the etiquette is you wait on that court or nearby that tennis court to let the people on that court currently playing know that you want to play and you want that court. Now, like I said in the previous tip, if a court opens up further down, let's say court one opens, you're waiting for court four, grab court one, it's open. If it's a club and you sign up for that court, you're gonna be the next one in line anyway. It's good etiquette, guys, if you're waiting for a tennis court, a specific one especially, wait by that tennis court nearby, maybe a couple feet away from it, or go on the tennis court, wait on the benches, and 
That lets the players know who are on that court, hey, we gotta wrap things up a little bit because someone else is waiting. The other instance this does happen is pickleball. I understand pickleball players, you really wanna play. However, tennis etiquette states that you should be behind the fences when you're waiting for that tennis court or wait on the bench in order to play. Sometimes I see people waiting next to the net on a tennis court and the tennis ball, by the way, is going at like about 40 to 60 to 80 miles an hour back and forth. If you're on the net and a player mishits that shot, comes right through your face and you're at the net post, you shouldn't have any right to get mad at them because you chose to stay in a danger area. If you're playing pickleball, then you need to wait by the benches or outside the courts. If you're a tennis player and you see a pickleball player waiting, just kindly ask and let them know the etiquette if they do choose to wait by the net and inform them, hey, stay by the benches, by the fence, or outside the fence so you guys don't get hit and it doesn't distract us, everybody's happy, we all can play tennis and then pickleball can walk right on after. Tennis etiquette mistake number seven doesn't even have anything to do with Hawaii tennis. If you have a clay court, you've seen this happen before, players sometimes forget to grade the clay court smooth and fresh for the next person walking onto that court to play. Guys, if you ever watch, let's say, the Roland Garros Grand Slam Tournament, also known as the French Open, one of the four biggest tennis tournaments in the world, if you watch the grounds people take care of each individual tennis court, by the way, after a set is done, they grade the court with a brush or a net or some kind of device that helps maintain the clay courts, keeps it smooth, makes the dirt even, so then when net players come out for their next set, they have a fresh surface to play on. At a club, guys, or at a facility that has a clay court, it is good etiquette. After you're done playing, regardless of who's next, you need to grade that clay court with whatever grading device is nearby. And most clubs, especially, they'll leave nets or special metal grading devices nearby on the fence, uh, in an equipment shed. And that's your job, by the way, to grade that clay court fresh for the next person coming on. Because when the clay court is not graded, you leave grooves and where your feet were sliding and balls landing. Next person comes out and they play and you had a hard slide in your match and that person comes trips and falls on that spot uh, as well as the balls. The balls mark the court on a clay court. It helps opponents tell where the ball landed during a match and in rare cases, you're gonna have discrepancies based on that mark. So if you don't clean that court from your ball marks when you were playing, then you're gonna have to fix that and be hauled accountable to someone else. They're gonna get annoyed at you. You may not know that, but it's good etiquette, guys. If you're on a clay court, please grade that court when you're done playing for the next person coming on. Tennis etiquette mistake number eight, guys, is riding bicycles and skateboards and anything with wheels on a tennis court. Guys, there's a reason when you show up to these parks or clubs, there are usually signs by the fence or the gate that specifically say what you can and can't do on a tennis court. In the can't do section, guys, bicycles, skateboards, I think, and some of these things are listed on that sign. So guys, when you ride those things on the tennis court, and tennis players, I'm talking to you too, when you do this on the court, guys, it actually can wreck the surface. When wheels are on the court, it makes lines and streaks on the tennis court. You slide and jump and do all these things. That's hitting the asphalt that the tennis court's made of, especially if it's a hard court, and that tears the hard court up. And by the way, guys, hard courts generally, at least in Hawaii, they cost about 40 grand each when you have to replace the whole thing. At least $10,000 just for the surface part alone. So guys, think twice before you bring bicycles and skateboards and stuff on the tennis court. If you bring them to the tennis court, you can ride them to and from the court, but when you're walking onto the tennis court, it's good etiquette to step off that board or bicycle, walk it in to the court, drop it off, and then you can go play or do whatever. For non-tennis players, guys, please, 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 if you can, ride your skateboards outside of the tennis court, even if there's no one there, just because it preserves the surface. Guys, no wheels on the tennis court uh, unless it's a specified tool used for tennis courts like squeegees, resurfacing uh, equipment, or anything like that. So guys, keep your skateboards and bicycles off the court. Thank you very much. Etiquette mistake number nine, leaning on the tennis net. Kids, I am talking to you because this is a common thing that happens. Tennis nets, guys, are 200 bucks. I mean, I'm not gonna beat around the bush that much. That is as much as a tennis racket, and net straps on the net cost at least 20 bucks to replace all the time. So guys, when you lean on the net, it stretches the net cord that is used to tighten the net via the net posts. 
When you lean on the net, that cord stretches and the net drops and you gotta keep cranking it over and over in order to maintain the cord so the net stays up here. And the net strap, if you lean it, move it, you know, for things like pickleball, you leave the net strap like that for too long, it wrecks the net strap, it stretches it, it doesn't work, it, you know, it goes on. So guys, please don't lean on the nets. Uh, if you can, the etiquette you can do, um, just don't lean on them, period. Uh, there's really no special answer for this. You go outside, you do whatever you want, outside of the tennis courts, lean on something else, I don't know, a tree, a bench, fence, but not the nets, guys. Uh, that's sacred territory for tennis players. Um, so please, guys, don't lean on those nets. It helps the tennis nets last a lot longer. Last but not least, guys, tennis etiquette mistake number 10, playing non-tennis sports on a tennis court. I'm probably gonna get some flack for this, but here's the deal. When you bring something like a basketball, a soccer ball, volleyball, anytime those things hit the ground, they are not meant for tennis courts. So they're meant mostly for grass or any or concrete outside, maybe a specifically designed surface for that ball and sport you're playing. When you're on a tennis court, you risk damaging the tennis surface itself and the nets, the fences, any of this kind of stuff that tennis courts are designed for tennis players. There are some sports that are kind of 50-50 in terms of playing on the actual tennis court itself. One of those things is soccer tennis. I've seen it before, you get some soccer players, they come out to the tennis court, they play, they use the nets, and the goal really is kind of keep the ball in the air, right? For tennis training purposes, I totally get it. I actually really like that kind of game. Um, but if you're playing soccer tennis, not many tennis players may know that it actually does exist as a game. So let them know kindly if someone has questions, you know, you can play. But also guys, please be respectful and don't damage the courts and nets when you are doing this. Using non-tennis footwear on a tennis court can also rack the surface. Uh, tennis shoes are smooth on the bottom. They're kind of designed with a very small tread so it doesn't beat up the tennis court as you play. And we can't go any further without addressing the elephant in the room with this last tip, pickleball. Guys, pickleball can be played on a tennis court, especially if there are lines already on the tennis court. If there are not any lines on the tennis court, lay down different things like rubber lines, string lines, chalk lines. Whatever way it takes to line the tennis court, you can do so. But when you do things like move the net strap in order to make the tennis net lower in order to play, just put the net strap back, nothing will happen. Portable nets, I love the idea of the portable net and I use them myself at our facility here at Wailaiki. However, guys, when you set the net up or take it down, if that net post or any of the metal parts scratch the tennis surface, that again wrecks the surface. So guys, please, be careful when you are doing pickleball stuff on a tennis court. And what I mean by that is just be aware of how much a tennis court costs as well as the players, you know, who were playing there for years. Again, tennis court for tennis players, that's the ideology we come from. Like, I'm a tennis player. That's what I would be thinking as well. I play pickleball too, by the way. So I try to be very cautious about setting pickleball stuff up when I'm playing and when I take it down and I just be mindful of the tennis community around me so that way I don't cross any barriers, they don't cross any barriers, get mad at me or anything like that and everybody wins. So pickleball, one of the only sports you can really play on a tennis court unless the tennis court itself is lined for the different sports. So let's say your example, you're at a residential place, a private club or wherever, a school high school, a basketball court, let's say lines and hoop on a tennis court, fine. You can use different things on a tennis court for that matter. But if the tennis court is specifically dedicated for tennis, if you're gonna do something else on there, just be very mindful of the tennis community that uses that facility so you take care of it. If you can, please play that sport off the tennis court unless it's specified you can play on it for like, you know, uh, varied reasons, court surface lines on a tennis court, multi-purpose courts, anything like that. Uh, but if tennis court is dedicated for tennis, it's good etiquette. Like, comment, subscribe, guys, if you like the video. If I missed any tennis etiquette ideas or rules you want to talk about and bring up, maybe I forgot to mention, leave it down here in the comments, and maybe I'll make another video like this in the future. But until then, guys, God bless, be safe, and aloha. Have etiquette, guys. Shoots.